Hello violin players, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we are continuing our course Learn to Play Violin Music Notes and today we're going to be talking about the notes on the D string. So we're going to be playing a little bit and we're going to be discussing it a little bit and it would be really nice if you had your violin ready and also perhaps have some lined music paper, so music manuscript paper and a pencil because as I've said in earlier lessons to learn the notes it's most helpful if you can practice writing them as well so I'm going to give you lots of examples of notes today and we'll be playing the notes as well. So um, I'm going to show you first what the notes on the D string look like and we're just going to quickly recap all the things that we've learned before because we're going to delve a little bit deeper today. So as you will probably remember the notes on the D string hang down below the bottom line of the stave. The notes on the D string are um, in the middle range of the sounds that the violin can make so um, that's why they're neither too low or too high on the stave. So they're just hanging down below and those are the notes for the open Ds. I will play this for you in a minute but before I do that I would like you to just think for a moment again that we have this, the treble clef here and the treble clef indicated the note G so this, the swally bit, the circle, goes round the second line up from the bottom and that is where the note G is and we are playing in 4-4 four, four time and 4-4 four, four time means, the top number means there are four beats in a bar so if I were to clap the rhythm for you that would sound 1, 2, 3, 4 and that is the meaning of the top four the meaning of the bottom four means they are in England they're called crotchet notes and in America, that's what, how you can recognize the four, they're called quarter notes. And four quarter notes make up a whole bar, as you can see. So we've got four crotchet beats in each bar, or four quarter notes in each bar. And we're going to count them one, two, three, four. So we have been talking a little bit about the pitch of the notes, which is the D. And we've also talked about the time, and the time is 4-4 four, four time. So let me play that for you. So um, I'll play this as 1, 2, 3, 4. And I could keep on repeating that, of course. And I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you have your violin ready, would you like to play it with me? We're on the D string, which is your second string from the left hand side. I'm playing it sort of roughly in the middle of the bow. If you want to know exactly how to learn to play the violin you need then you have to have a look at my other course which is Suzuki Violin School Book 1. Uh, but here we go. This is 4 Ds. 1, 2, 3, 4. So far in this course we have discussed quarter notes or crotchets and also half notes and minims and today we're learning a new note and that is the semibrieve and you can see it here and a semibrieve in America is called a whole note and the reason why it's called a whole note is because it fills a whole bar so if you have a look here at the time signature again you can see we have got four crotchet beats four quarter beats in each bar and this first bar here is exactly like the one I played before. One, two, three, four. Then here we've got the two minims or half notes as they're called in America. So we're counting two counts for every note. And two notes of two counts obviously make up four counts uh, in the bar. So we're going one, two, three, four. And then we've got the whole note at the end, which lasts for four counts. So we've got one, two, three, four. Now, if I play you this, it will sound like this. I'll count myself in for four. One, two, three, four. Your 
bow goes really slowly on this last note here because you have to hold this note for four counts and you have to sustain all that sound all that time. I'll play this for you again. I'll count myself in for four. One, two, three, four. the fingers on the D string look like in music and what they are called. As you've already learnt in earlier lessons in this course, the notes of the scale gradually go up the stave as the pitch gets higher. So here is my D um, that hangs down below the bottom line of the stave. Slightly higher on D, we've got the first finger on D and you can see that its note head goes through the bottom line. So whereas the, the lowest note, the D, hangs off that line, this one is exactly on top of that bottom line of the stave and we play this with one finger on the D string. And as we go higher, we've got another note which goes in between the bottom two lines, so it's slightly higher than that one. And it's the second finger on the D string. And then if we go on top of the next line again, it's the third finger on the D string. And you hopefully have already realized that I'm not looking at the stems at all. I'm just looking at those balls, those note heads, because they are telling me where my note is, not the stems. And later on we will learn and we will see that notes can have their stems down as well as up, you see. So that is the reason why we're just looking at those little note heads. So D is hanging down below the stave. One finger on D is on top of the bottom line, so slightly higher than that D. And then yet a little bit higher yet again is the second finger. It's between the bottom two lines. The third finger on the D string is on top of the next line up, so on top of the second line from the bottom. And then I could play this note as a fourth finger, which I've indicated here right now. But this note is the same as your A string note. So you can play this note in two different ways now. You can play it with the fourth finger on D, or you could play it with an open A string. But as we're thinking about all the notes on the D string, that's why we're playing it with four fingers on D. And then we go down again, three fingers on D, two fingers on D, one finger on D, and D. Now, you will notice that um, I have written all of these notes as minims now, as half notes, with a semi-breathe, a whole note at the end. So my bows are going to be really, really long. Let me play this for you now. And since we are playing in 4-4 four, four time, I'm going to count myself in for 4 as well. 1, 2, 3, 4... while you play and while you work on the left hand and the bow and so on is yet an extra thing to think about and that is especially why I've put this course on in this series here so that you have got a little bit of time to think about how you would count that. So let's play this same exercise once again and I'll count out loud while we play and I would encourage you to count along with me if you can. So I'm counting us in for four. Are you ready to play? One, two, three, four. 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 
take some practice to start to count in your head and what is a very good exercise to uh, to encourage you to think about uh, counting the beats or feeling the beats is whenever you hear any music so if you put the radio on and you listen to some music see if you can tap the beat like that and gradually you will be able to work out how many beats there are in each bar like we've got four beats in a bar and during this course we will look at other types of time signatures as well so how you count three beats in a bar or two beats in a bar or six beats in a bar uh, but you know we're not running ahead of ourselves if you can manage when you go to the supermarket and you hear some music playing in the background trying to clap the music along or listen to it and see if you can find a lilt in the music or a pulse in the music that is excellent practice now let's think now about what these notes are called and here I've written down the letter names of all the notes and now we're starting to think about the pitch a little bit more so the open D string is of course called D one finger on D is called E. We know that notes go like the alphabet uh, up to the letter G and then the next note is called an A again. So D, E, F sharp, G. There is that A that we can either play with the fourth finger on the D string or with the open A string. And then we go down the scale again. G, F sharp, E, D. D. I've put two D's at the end to, to, to fill up a whole bar of four beats. Now you will notice that this tune has got a, a hashtag here and that is an F sharp and that makes the second finger here on the D string wide for your finger to play and the only reason that we play an F sharp here is that it's easier to play because we want to play with the same finger pattern on every string. Now, for now, uh, I'm not going into much detail why that note is called F sharp. Later on, we might come to talk about that, but all that you need to remember for now is that that note is called F sharp and you play it with a white space between your fingers. So let's play this now, shall we? And let's think about what those letter names are called while we play the notes. Whilst I'm going to count us in for four, I'm not going to worry too much about counting. I'm just going to think this time about what the letter names of the notes are. So one, two, three, four. D, E, F sharp, G, A, G, F sharp. have just played a whole range of crotchet notes or in American terms quarter notes and at the end we have played some minims that is the English version or half notes in America and I should be using these two terms at the same time because we've got lots of English friends visiting us here and also lots of American friends and it's just helpful I think if you know both of these terms so let me play it to you again and let's just practice those letter names shall we one two three four at home I would really like you to write these things down on your own music manuscript paper I have just downloaded this line paper from the internet you can download it for free and make the lines wider or smaller uh, just as how it how you see it fit 
but it, you integrated much me much better uh, when you learn to write these things as we go along. So by all means, play this video back and stop and start it all the time so that you allow yourself time to learn these notes because you might think, oh, today's lesson's really easy. Absolutely it is. It, we will be getting a little bit more difficult as we go along, but it will be really helpful if you were to make progress that you really learn these things really as well as you possibly can before we move on. So I very much look forward to seeing you again in the next lesson. But for now, thank you so much for putting your faith in me and for watching this video. And good luck with your practice. Goodbye.